This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. Today I have for you two stories that on the surface don't appear to be linked, but they actually are. One is an important update on Bishop Torres of Puerto Rico, who was summarily dismissed from his diocese on, frankly, spurious grounds. And the other is a story out of France, where we see Francis barring ordinations of traditionally minded seminarians from moving forward at the last moment, literally right before they were about to be ordained. And he did it because the bishop is too traditionally minded. There's a, thir a through line in all these stories. I want to see if you're going to be able to pick up on it. So let's just dive into both stories so we can see what the next phase of Francis's demolition campaign against the church is going to look like. From Pillar Catholic, we get this headline. Deposed Puerto Rican bishop pushes for Pope Francis meeting. You know, there's an old principle in justice that tells us that if we are being punished for something, we should get to know the reason. And Bishop Torres has never been given a good reason for his dismissal from his see in Puerto Rico. A lot of things have been said that try to explain why he was removed, but none of them are satisfactory. So he's doing what is entirely within his rights to do. He's seeking a meeting with Francis to get an explanation. From the article, quote, a deposed Puerto Rican bishop continues to make efforts to meet with Pope Francis, nearly three months after his removal from the Diocese of Arecibo was announced by the Holy See March 9th. In a canonical brief obtained by the pillar, Bishop Daniel Fernandez Torres claims he has not been given any official statement on the reasons for his removal, and that he was not offered any opportunity to address Vatican concerns over his leadership before he was removed from office. As of today, Bishop Fernandez has not been told exactly how he was disobedient to the Pope or how his disagreements with some of the actions of his fellow bishops disrupted communion, the brief argues. Nor has he been charged, verbally or in writing, with a crime or delict by any competent superior authority. He has not been told or instructed on how his ministry has hard, had become harmful or ineffective for any reason. There was no investigation prior to the decree or of appointment to replace Bishop Fernandez with an apostolic administrator, end quote. End quote. If you're not familiar with the story, a couple of months ago, Bishop Torres was removed from his diocese on the grounds, apparently, that he did not go along with what the church was doing in 2020 with the secular authorities, we'll say. He also refused to send his seminarians to the single seminary in Puerto Rico and kept his own one open because apparently the single seminary in Puerto Rico doesn't actually teach the Catholic faith. There were apparently other reasons too, but those are the crux of the matter. The lack of being charged with a formal offense is rather puzzling, given that the modernists in Rome, and especially Francis, have no shortage of invectives they like to hurl at people who don't fall in line. Well, we are all familiar with the charges, typically laid against traditionalists, rigid, pharisaical, holding to a dead tradition. It's also tiresome, but the modernists, and especially Francis, never tire of leveling charges. So why haven't they told Torres what he's done? Torres filed a statement with several bishops in Rome, but not yet with Francis, though that is expected to happen next. From the article, quote, But a source close to the bishop told the pillar that Fernandez is preparing to file it officially, after several requests for a meeting in recent weeks have gone without a response. The bishop has been reaching out every week through the Secretary of State, through the papal household, through anywhere that he can to try to get a meeting. He wants to meet with the Holy Father and explain his case, the source, who is not authorized to speak on the record, explained. The bishop's canonical brief argues that Pope Francis should observe 2016 norms the Pope promulgated for the penal trial of a bishop. Because no investigation ever took place, this Bishop Torres Fernandez is exerting his right as a member of the Christian faithful to request the congregation of bishops to follow the guidelines set forth in the apostolic letter Com Una Madre Amore Vale and to adhere to the canons regulating administrative acts and to the privation of office. Bishop Torres Fernandez has always been obedient to the Roman pontiff. There is no record of disobedience. There is no record of Bishop Fernandez questioning the authority of the Supreme Pontiff or the exercise of the same. In fact, Bishop Fernandez has affirmed his obedience to and communion with the Holy Father, the text argues, end quote. So Francis issues rules for how these things should be run, but then ignores his own rules when the time comes to actually adhere to them. And people wonder why some of us call this a lawless time in the church. Torres isn't the only one getting shafted. 
Remember that story about Dom Alcuin Reed, the noteworthy scholar, theologian, and liturgist who was illicitly ordained. I revisited the story in brief uh, this past week when I reported on Bishop Barron's promotion. Father Reed is languishing because his ordinary is afraid. Afraid of the climate in Rome, where ordaining traditional priests is at least frowned upon, if not outright restricted in many cases. This is doubly true now that Supich and his ilk are now overseeing traditional religious for the entire church in the Roman Curia. This is what characterizes lawless times, in society or in the church. Rule through free fear. Rule through fear of reprisal. Fear of punishment. Fear of censure. Thus we see Father Reed's bishop punishing the priest and denying him ordination out of fear of reprisal. But his actions didn't stop the reprisals from coming anyway. Rome is vicious. Francis is vicious. And has shown us what the next stage of this war against tradition in the church is probably going to look like. You may have heard the story about Rome ordering a delay in the ordination of traditionally minded priests in one diocese in France. Diane Montagna broke the story a few days ago, and I wanted it to develop so we could discuss it appropriately here. Father Z breaks down in his blog with his excerpt from his post on it this whole mess. Quote, the bishop of the diocese of Freu Toulon, uh, Most Reverend Dominic Ray, has been one of the most well-balanced and tradition-friendly bishops of France. Now comes this. Rome has basically quashed priestly ordinations in Toulon. Father Z then shifts here and quotes another article on this. The diaconal and priestly ordinations scheduled for the end of June in Toulon will not take place. Rome questioned about the restructuring of the Seminary of Castile and its policy of acceptance, in particular members of new communities. The blow is hard. The Vatican has asked the Diocese of Freu Toulon to postpone the diaconal and priestly ordinations scheduled for the end of June, announced Bishop Dominique Ray Thursday, June 2nd, in a press release. This decision follows a fraternal visit at the request of Rome, undertaken in recent months by Cardinal Jean-Marc Aveline, Archbishop of Marseille and Metropolitan of the eponymous province of which Toulon depends. The prelate would have noted, according to our information, several points which raise questions in the formation and discernment of the candidates of the Seminary of Castile, but also the reception of members of new communities and of young people from dioceses outside Toulon. Alongside the many beautiful fruits of that bear the proclamation of the gospel and the mission committed Christians, clerics, consecrated, and laity, in our dioceses, the questions that certain Roman dicasteries were asking themselves about the restructuring of the seminary and the reception policy of the diocese confirmed Bishop Ray in his press release. An interview on these subjects, even recently with Cardinal Roulette, prefect of the Congregation for Bishops, made it possible for to provide useful additional information. It is while waiting for new exchanges between Toulon and the departments concerned that Rome has asked to postpone these ordinations. End quote. So in summary, Rome is questioning the caliber of men who are selected for the seminary and questioning the fact that new traditional communities were had been allowed to form in his diocese, which is a hint at Father Reed's Benedictine group, which is a relatively new group that was formed recently, and probably one among others. The bishop was friendly to tradition, but cowed into submission by the pe people in Rome trying to destroy the faith and replace it with their simulacrum, their ape of the church. One of the facts that is being overlooked in this story is that in Argentina, Francis made it possible to prevent traditional seminarians who are expelled from seminary for, you know, the crime of actually being Catholic from finding a new diocese or seminary to attend instead, because that actually happens in America and other places. That is probably what the end game is here, both for Bishop Ray and for the church more broadly. Look, it's an open secret that traditional priestly fraternities are bursting at the seams with vocations. Corralling these men to either abandon their vocation or trying to join the SSPX is clearly what they're moving towards doing. And frankly, the SSPX doesn't have the resources to take everyone who is otherwise qualified that applies. To destroy traditional Catholicism and the counter-revolution that's coming from it, they're hoping to starve it of vocations, first in the formal diocesan structures, then in the religious orders and priestly fraternities. That's the goal. That's the clear plan. And Bishop Ray is the first testing ground for this policy, or the first high-profile testing call ground at any rate. Marco Tosati, the Italian journalist with deep connections among Episcopal circles in Europe, posted this on his blog, written for another Catholic site. It's worth seeing because it clearly shows the endgame. Some people out there get what's going on. Quote, but there is, if possible, something even worse. Archbishop Ray is precisely the type of traditionalist bishop 
who welcomes all the new communities, from the Charismatics to the Traditionalists, including the community of St. Martin. He is the pastor of the living forces of French Catholicism. And, of course, the curators of the bankruptcy of the Church of France will triumph on the occasion of this condemnation. As, have I, as I have already said, the aforementioned living forces, although distant from each other in terms of liturgy, canonical rules, or sensitivity, are linked. What the modernists hate is not the cassock or the Latin, but the Mass, the Confession, the Eucharistic Adoration, and the Word, the Orthodox Faith. Having been a seminarian at an important French seminary, I can give personal testimony. And so, reading the Modu Popio, Traditionis Custodis, it was obvious that after the priests of the Samorum Pontificum, the jackals would attack the community of San Martino, as they had attacked that of San Giovanni, then that of Emmanuel, and so on. The, hy the hyenas of the media, believing that the work is over for the trads, have already begun to denounce the community of St. Martin as too rooted in identity, and I am very afraid that this decision to prohibit Archbishop Ray from ordaining will accelerate this witch hunt and therefore the collapse of vocations, and more generally, the collapse of the church in France. End quote. Everything he said there is correct. The actions taken by Rome are pointing only in the direction of collapse. Look, they preach the renewal in the church. They preach a new springtime, but what they're bringing is only collapse. They know it too. They have to know it. They cannot be so out of touch with reality that they believe what they're doing is for the betterment of the church. They want that smaller church that Father Ratzinger spoke about in the 1960s. They want a church that is so small that it has no influence in the world. They want a church that exists at the whims of the secular elite. That is what they want. That is what they are working towards, and the traditional movement is the main thing standing in their way from achieving it. That is why there are so many attacks on traditional figures from those who are supposedly on our side of things in the church, especially here in America. So please keep the Diocese of Toulon in your prayers, and Bishop Ray in your prayers, and Father Reed in your prayers, and especially those seminarians whose vocations are being destroyed because Francis and company can't stand the deposit of the faith. I'm curious what you think about all this, so let me know what you think in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help. Share this on social media because that does help as well. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.